too much, right? Like, this is too much. Is this more subtle? My fear is that it's yellow, so it'll kind of blend in with the background, but I did wear this last time, and uh, we're coming full circle. Is he cool there? He's gonna chill? Don't move. I talk about video games a decent amount from time to time. A lot of the time, I have pretty hot takes. Sometimes I am very opinionated, but I do like to believe that regardless, I give unbiased reviews. I used to think that. But now, I'm not even sure an unbiased review exists. There's nothing unbiased about giving your opinion on something. But every man has his weakness. Mine just happens to be funny little creatures you can run around and collect. This is gonna be the least cool I've ever looked in a video. The arrow of time moves forward relentlessly, and it scares me every day about how many days I just sleepwalk through. I've been doing this a very long time. A pretty long time, okay? Let's not get out of hand. I started doing videos like this in 2019. That was three years ago. Of course, a lot of them are currently missing. Not to me, I can watch them whenever, but I don't because I really don't like how a lot of the older ones turned out. So I don't really want anyone to see them, at least now, maybe I'll get over it. But the one I do keep up for historical record is uh, when I gave my first impressions on Pokemon Sword and Shield when it launched. The crux of that video is that I explained the history of the last couple months of the problems people have with modern Pokemon and then gave my first thoughts, initial opinion of playing the first couple hours of that game. Obviously, you can't have a full thought out review after playing a game for a couple of hours. You need to really grasp the situation. So every day going forward, I will be playing Pokemon Scarlet and Violet for a bunch of hours every day. And at the end of every day, I will come right back here and give you my opinion of what I did in that day, how the game is going, how I feel about it. It's gonna be a nice little adventure we're going on together. And I don't wanna hear anyone saying, oh, he changed his review, he changed his mind, he's a hypocrite. What you feel about a game could change day to day. You could have a bad day where the game breaks and glitches, or you could have a good day where it's all exploration and you're having fun. That's why I think it's important to separate these by different days. I'm sure the first day when I first start the game, I will give it a 10 out of 10 just because of how excited I am for the new generation. And every day I play, the reviewer will go down and I'll like it less and less, or maybe even, <gasps> like it more? Pokemon? I just said Pokemon. But Pokemon is very divisive. People either think they are the greatest games ever made, or uh, they are a purge, and they're killing the game industry, and everyone who buys those games are stupid for giving Game Freak money they don't deserve. Did you notice uh, all the gym badges I have, by the way? I didn't point it out. I was trying to be subtle about it, but then I gave up. My stance on Pokemon is the same stance I have for Marvel movies, Steven Universe, Grand Theft Auto, they're fine. I feel like on the internet, you have to side with one extreme, so nothing can really be like, okay anymore. It's either the best thing ever or the worst thing ever. People love to throw around the word mid as an insult uh, nowadays, but mid just means, you know, middle, medium, okay, fine. If you think Marvel movies are the death of modern cinema, you're dumb. If you think Marvel movies are the greatest films ever made, you're also dumb. Oh, what good discourse, Andrew. Everyone who disagrees with me is dumb. I'm not dumb though. Everyone I don't like is a poopy head. Stuff can just be okay. Contrary to that whole thing I just said though, I would like to use this video to bridge the gap to three years ago, the previous Sword and Shield video and talk more about how generation eight turned out because there is actually a lot of problems I would like to talk about. Initially, I was gonna skip over Sword and Shield because I already reviewed it, but my review contained me playing the game for five hours and then reviewing it in one night and giving my initial thoughts. I hadn't even beaten the game, so that I'm, I'm gonna talk about it now that I've played it thoroughly. Now, what does it mean for a game to be fun? Aw, oh, come on, I just started. Is a game fun? as long as you enjoy it. Is playing a super glitchy Sonic game fun because you find it entertaining? Or something like Kingdom Hearts because of how silly it is? Wow. Sometimes there will be a movie or show that loops back around and people love it so much and genuinely enjoy themselves because of how bad it is. Does the movie The Room not bring joy to thousands every year? But I'm not here to say that Pokemon Sword and Shield are so terrible garbage games that they're funny to play and fun because of how bad they are. I'm just bracing you for the fact that 
I had a lot of fun with these games. I mean, there's always the baseline of fun where there's a new Pokemon generation because just by default, it's fun to experience new Pokemon, catch them, train them, evolve them, figure out what their deal is. And Sword and Shield has some pretty out there evolution mechanics. I am one Pokemon away from finishing my living decks, but it's not one I could realistically get as of right now, so I started moving over to getting all the forms of Pokemon. So I have a box full of all Gigantamaxed, every combination of Alcremie. Took me multiple days, but you know what? I had fun doing it. I'm gonna get more to the DLC a little bit later, but I was initially very annoyed that you couldn't Gigantamax already existing Pokemon. You had to catch them as Gigantamax Pokemon. But when they added the mushroom soup, in the DLC where you could Gigantamax any Pokemon you already had, I had a new lot in life. Instead of spending hours getting every form, which I already did, I spent hours trying to Gigantamax every Pokemon I already owned that could Gigantamax, and I did, and I don't think you can transfer them to the new game, so that was a waste of time. And that's not even getting into how much fun I had with the new shiny hunting technique, another kind of side thing that entertained me for hours while playing this game. But the side stuff is really what's important. It's the stuff I'm getting into. I played this game for three years and thoroughly enjoyed it. I played it for hours. So why is it that I can't remember any of the campaign? Pokemon games are split into two halves. The story, and I'm including post-game in the story, even though Sword and Shield didn't really have a post-game, and all the stuff you do after you've beaten the game, all the side stuff, all the collecting, all the grinding. For me, every time there's a new generation that's released, whatever version I have becomes the new hub, the new hangout spot for all the Pokemon I've ever owned. I'm the kind of guy that transfers up everything. I would use my sister's DS to transfer my team from Heart Gold to Diamond and Diamond to Heart Gold and vice versa, and I even transferred stuff from Fire Red and Sapphire. I've been doing it since I was a baby. And then I got White version, and all those Pokemon that were built up from those four versions all moved on to White, and I get to do the Unova stuff with all the Pokemon I own. I really don't have any fond memories of Y version, like at all, but at the time it was really cool for me to transfer up all the Pokemon I own and see them in glorious 3D. Glorious is in quotation marks and has a little asterisk next to it. I know this portion of the video is supposed to be only about Sword and Shield, but looking back at all the stuff, all the discourse that's been going on the last couple years, I really loved Sun and Moon, like still. The Hangout Spot game I spent the most time and love into was Pokemon Moon. I beat the Elite Four with every team I've had up until that point. I got them all max friendship, made them all love me in Pokemon Refresh, and I even started shiny hunting in that game. You guys know me, all right? I have very little patience. I hate cutscenes and long ass dialogue sequences, but for whatever reason, that didn't bother me with Sun and Moon. I just think that those games have so much more to offer if you just look past the opening of the game. My moon version still holds a place in my heart and still holds a bunch of Pokemon I haven't been able to transfer up because not all the Pokemon are in Sword and Shield. Let's talk about that. Dexit, the name given to the announcement that not all Pokemon would return in Pokemon Sword and Shield for the first time since Ruby and Sapphire. I've heard a lot of people defend this by saying, well, the only people affected by this are the kind of people that transfer up all their Pokemon, which is me. That's me, they're talking about me. This directly affects me substantially. Okay, but if we are looking on the bright side of things, this cutoff did make me use a lot more of the newer Pokemon and a lot of the unsung heroes that I transferred up that weren't on my team but were side characters. In my first version, Diamond version, I have two Poliwhirls for some reason. I don't remember catching either, but they were the twins and I hung out with them a lot in Shield. But on the other hand, why did they do this? Why would, why? And it's not like they had to make all the models again, or it was hard to make them all work in this game. You could just copy and paste them. They've been using the same 3D models since X and Y. And you don't even need to catch them or really put them in the game in the wild. There was no national decks in Sun and Moon either, but you could still put them in that game. There are very, very few reasons to not put every Pokemon in the new games. The reason you should not say um, is that you want to make the game look better? Okay. I hate this, but you guys have seen this tree, right? I'm making a lot of assumptions about you guys and assuming you're making assumptions about me. You know me. You know me. Another assumption. I don't care about graphics as long as the game is fun. A game could be a circle jumping around a uh, blender free background and you're fighting a triangle and if it's still fun game of the year I don't care about graphics, but I think a lot of people are misunderstanding why this tree was a problem ever since this fucking tree hit the scene It has been non-stop hellish takes people are pointing out similar looking geometry in Pokemon Legends Arceus Which is completely missing the point the reason this tree was mocked 
was because the developers specifically said they cut Pokemon to make the game look better. They didn't say that for Legends Arceus or Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, probably because they learned their lesson and we're gonna get to those. They said that they cut all of these beloved Pokemon to make Pokemon Sword and Shield look their best and they do not. Nobody is asking anyone to play devil's advocate, all right? The devil doesn't need an advocate, he's the fucking devil, but fuck it. In retrospect, if they were going to start cutting Pokemon in Generation 8, Sword and Shield is probably the best scapegoat. If they started with Legends Arceus, people would hyper-focus on the graphics and not the new gameplay mechanics. And if they started with BDSP, nuclear bombs would have been set off. Obviously, if I had any say, first off, I wouldn't cut them out. I'm not a game developer, and I'm, again, making a lot of assumptions, but it, people have modded the game to put the Pokemon back in, in a matter of a day, a couple hours. If fucking people with Unity can do it, you can do it. But also, if I was in charge of PR, I would not say why we cut them. Or I would just say like, oh yeah, we're making too many Pokemon. Eventually you gotta make some cuts. All right, I don't agree with that, but fine. Don't say like, oh, we're gonna make the game look its best. You, you guys blew it. This is the highest grossing video game franchise of all time. We have my clear cut opinion on how stupid I think it is to cut Pokemon out. Let's talk about the tree. This tree that we're looking at, which I think is actually in the game, is very clearly in the wild area, which was a big mechanic for this game. A new feature with very confusing marketing. I don't think they did this on purpose, or at least I hope not, but the wild area as a concept when first pitched was very confusing. It's only certain sections of the game, and really it's only one section of the game all connected, but the trailer doesn't make it seem like that. The trailer also makes it seem like whatever the weather is will change how the location looks, which it really doesn't, but I digress. And of course the piece de resistance, I hope I said that right, of stuff that looks cool but isn't actually real is the multiplayer. You see in this trailer, maybe not intentionally, we don't know, it makes it seem like you can run around the wild area with your friends by your side which you can't. You can exchange a sack of potatoes with strangers, but it's very unlikely you're gonna find your friends there. Me and my buddy Logang played it alongside each other on release day, and we were excited to get into the wild area so we could play together, and it lasted us about an hour while we tried to figure out how it worked, and I didn't want to look up spoilers, but I'm like, wait, I don't know. Okay, let's look this up. How does this work? It took us a couple hours, and then we realized you can't. You can't run alongside each other, you can't play together, you can't really do anything fun in the wild area together. This is why I'm keeping my hype for Scarlet and Violet kind of reserved, because again, in that trailer, it looks like you can play together with your friends in the open area, but I refuse to be burned again, never again. I refuse to trust. I only talked about the wild area so I could talk more about the tree, and then I completely went on a different side tangent. This review is somehow more unfocused than the one I didn't write. The ugly tree that we're talking about only appears in the wild area. There's other towns in the game with better looking trees. Some of them I could even call pretty. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this as a reason to defend the game because again, I think the reason they did this was kind of stupid. If you've ever played Pokemon Sword and Shield in the wild area, in switch mode, handheld mode, you know it chugs a lot. This tiny little machine with these clearly bootleg Joy-Cons can barely run the wild area with the ugly low poly tree. Imagine what would happen if it ran the pretty looking trees. You'd probably burn your hands. Well, that just comes from poor optimization. We have seen next gen games run pretty well on the Switch, so why does Pokemon not get that? I think the entirety of Sword and Shield's marketing was just like a whole mess. I mean, they're the fifth best-selling Nintendo Switch games, so what do I know? They moved a lot of units, but those games are often put together, so I think the numbers might be fudged a little bit by idiots who bought two versions of the game when you can only buy one just to get a stupid map, and then the map didn't even come with the version because you pre-ordered it from the wrong place, and you didn't even get a steelbook idiots. They started off at E3 by saying not all Pokemon will return and then continued that downward spiral by saying, oh, we're going to make the game look better, which people found the tree and they ran with the tree. And then we got the wild area, which was confusing. And then the game came out to a little fanfare. I guess we could talk about the actual game now. Contrary to popular belief, I don't want the majority of this video to be taken up by a long in-depth sword and shield review. This month is supposed to be the easy one. So I'm not going to go step by step through the entire campaign and explain why it didn't work. I can tell you though, all I remember from playing the game twice, remember two versions, is 
uh, glowing tree city where they were all like glowing in mushrooms bead I really like bead and the tournament at the end. That's it That's all I remember if you would ask me what my favorite memory tied to each individual Pokemon game would be I would tell you something that happened in my adventure through the region Contrary to all the stuff I've been saying in sword and shield I did have a lot of fun with it Just none of it was in the story none of it was in the campaign none of them were even in the towns the campaign was bad I'll say it despite bitching for an uncomfortable amount of time about how how the wild area betrayed my trust. Some of my fondest Pokemon memories ever happened there. The nature of the wild area being big and vast means it's the best place to shiny hunt and hatch eggs. Hatching eggs is tied to shiny hunting. I don't know why I separated those two. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba. Oh! Yo! Oh! Oh! But not just running around the wild area. Sword and Shield added a new mechanic, raid battles, new to Pokemon, not new in general. There are these little piles of rocks they call dens, and from time to time they will have faint red beams of light coming out of them. This means there's a Pokemon there. When the beam is thicker and a strong purple, then it's a max raid. That means the Pokemon you'll encounter is much stronger, and in certain places there'll be Gigantamax forms. This was the only way to get new Gigantamax forms. And as was the case as uh, GTA, as I talked about in my Xbox video, most of the fun was had using glitches. How it's supposed to work is the raid dens reset every day, and if you change the date on your Switch, it will not change anything. However, if you throw a Wishing Piece, an item you can buy with points that you can also throw in empty raid dens to start a raid, if you go into the raid and hit Invite Others, and then quickly go to your Switch settings and change the date to the next day, once you come back and leave the raid, the den will still be lit up but it'll re-roll and you have a chance to get something better. Nintendo likes to do this thing now where they release games kind of unfinished and then months after they keep rolling out more and more free updates to add, make it seem like there's more content for that game. And on one hand, this will cause problems way down the line for when they shut down the Switch online services and someone buys the game at like a kid or something and wants to play this retro game and then is upset that they can't unlock all the characters. On the other hand, I have played every single new Mario sports game way more than I would have if they didn't slowly trickle content. It's really shady to release a $60 game unfinished, but I kind of fuck with it because it's nice to go back to that game after forgetting about it for months. It's like, oh, they added Shy Guy or something. All right, let's play it a little bit. But if you're asking my review of all these new Mario sports games is if you're buying them to play by yourself single player, don't. These are fun to hang out at parties. They're really sad to play by yourself. Whether it's the release of a new Gigantamax form that wasn't in base game or the special raid of a Milsery that has the Gigantamax genes so you can catch 63 of them and get every single form of Gigantamax. Oh, just me? Or maybe raids of shinies will pop up from time to time. I had some good times, good memories hunting, you know, getting shinies, streaming, playing with friends, but the most fun, perhaps my fondest Pokemon memory ever, was at MAGFest. And I know I keep saying put a pin in MAGFest, but I am going to talk about it probably very soon. MAGFest 2020. I got together with a group of people sitting on the floor who I have not met previously and have not talked to since, but we all exchange numbers and Discord and Snapchat and stuff because there's a way in Sword and Shield, like I said, the glitches, that if you have a cool raid, you can invite people and then quit out and they can still do that raid, but you get to keep doing it. You don't lose it. You can keep infinitely. Well, there were a couple people who had multiple switches set up in the very middle of the little lobby area. One had a shiny Grimmsnarl raid, and one had a shiny Gengar raid. Both were Gigantamax, and everyone, like 30 people, were gathered around all with our little switches, all playing Sword and Shield, like, oh man, I gotta get in. Did you get in? Did you catch it? And it was legitimately hard to catch them. Shiny hunting has been getting kind of easy, which, like, is good for getting more people into it, but it's hard because, like, it doesn't feel as great when you just easily catch them. But these were legitimately hard battles and legitimately hard to catch. I sat there for hours trying to get one of each. And you make little group friends with these people, like, oh man, did you get in? I got in. Are we in together? We can, we can trade we could figure everything out. That was the most connective, most social I've ever felt when playing Pokemon. And I went to tournaments. I've gone to trading events. I've gone to GameStop events. Just all those people gather around on the floor, exploiting the game, basically, in the wild area, doing Gigantamax shiny raids. That's the most fun I've ever had playing this game series. So that's my experience with base, sword, and shield. But as you know, the year after, well, first off, there was a deadly pandemic, but we could forget about that. Why would I bring that up? There was DLC for these games. Another reason I'm very reserved when it comes to Scarlet Violet hype is also because of the marketing of the DLC. The first trailer for both versions, we saw new forms in each, 
Oh, new Slowpoke form. There's going to be new Reggies. There's going to be new uh, Bird Trio. This is just the stuff they're showing us. So what kind of stuff are they not showing us? Nothing. After this trailer dropped, everyone on the internet, and it's my fault for believing them, I guess, like, we're gonna have a new Arcanine form, there's gonna be a new Taurus, there's gonna be so many new forms, and they're gonna be all over the map, and there's so much new stuff. There wasn't. I got my hopes up. My fault, I guess. I'm done with marketing. I'm done listening to anyone. There's not as many new forms, it's just the Slowpoke, but it is fun to walk around the area. There's a new Mythical you could do fun battle towers with. The story was a little bit more engaging than the baseline story for Sword and Shield, and Pokemon could follow you now. For better or for worse. You wanna hurry the fuck up? How are you the fastest Pokemon in this game? And you move it at damn slow, what the fuck? You have like base 1000 speed. What are you doing? You fucking serious, man? Some bullshit. If you don't hurry up my... This game is trash. This game is fucking trash. Did you see that? The entire area was a wild area, so the camera was free. And you get the feeling this is kind of what they wanted Sword and Shield to be. There was a leaked development build, a beta or alpha or whatever, of Sword and Shield, where you could turn the camera the whole way at any point in the game. So it seems like it was a very late thing where they're like, we can't do this. Cut. Uh, make it so only the wild area has the camera. Pokemon following you to a certain degree. Bunch of new Pokemon got added back. I was happy to transfer in my... Incineroar and a free camera. This was our first glimpse of what a new Pokemon game could be an open world Pokemon game I mentioned the max soup a lot, but I'm really downplaying how often I did this and how much I think you need to do three Raid battles to get one mushroom to spawn and then you need three mushrooms to make soup to make one Pokemon Giganamax And like I said, I had transferred everything I could transfer into sword and shield and I have multiple Blastoise and multiple Charizards I'm pretty sure I started diamond my Pokemon adventure in 2008 so it had been 11, 12 years later, 12 years worth of Pokemon, um, duplicates or otherwise, that could all Gigantamax. So I had two boxes full that I had to, how many are in a box? Like, like 36, I think it's six by five or something, maybe 35. That times three and then times three again. That's how, that I did this way longer than anyone should. It's kind of like when Bowser's Fury came out, that little add-on for Mario 3D World, where it was a very small side DLC section, but it's also like an open world collectathon Mario game. And everyone's like, holy, why didn't you make this a game? With Pokemon, it seems like they did. Again, I'm being reserved about Scarlet and Violet, but I am very excited because it comes out very soon when I'm filming this and I, I love Pokemon. Contrary to, you know, this video. And I like Cub Fu and I like his forms, but I like Cub Fu more than the Urshifu forms. There was another DLC. I think both DLCs were building on the wild area and the stuff that worked in it. So Isle of Armor was just all wild area, walk around collecting little things, catching new Pokemon where the Crown Tundra was more about the raid aspect. They added these max raid dens that you could actually finally play with your friends with. You could play the raids with your friends, but again, you can run around with them. And the max raid was a lot more fun. It involved strategy, it involved talking to people, it involved catching legendaries and shiny hunting. What I didn't like initially is that you had to choose rental Pokemon and you couldn't bring your own in. I was bummed about that. But in retrospect, it makes it a lot more fun because again, more strategy goes into it because you could switch your Pokemon out. Just like, oh man, is this one gonna work? Everyone was freaking out at not being able to beat Zygarde and everyone was having a great time. That little period when that DLC came out and everyone's like, hey, does anyone have a Zygarde? Uh, invite me to that. I feel like there's a way we could beat it. I know the perfect strategy. It was fun. And on top of that, and the new area, and making your own fun, I did shiny hunt the Reggies uh, and the DLC. It's a... Uh... No way! What do Twitch mods even fucking do? I mean, that's a game mechanic, but they don't tell you to do that. I made my own fun. And speaking of making fun, well, that means laughing at people. I mean, making your own fun. You know, people talk about the graphics and how weird the grass texture looks in the wild area. And even in the Isle of Armor, like if you're ever making a grass texture, it's always the hardest thing to make because it always looks off. But the Crown Tundra, I'm not gonna feel bad saying this. It was gorgeous. Or maybe I just really like Christmas. Due to recent personal issues, uh, this may be the last video I make this year. So I'm just gonna treat the Pokemon video as also the Christmas video. Ho, ho, ho. All right, enough of this. The soundtrack, the way the snow falls, the kind of 
chill noise in the air, standing on the snow, wearing cozy clothes, having little fires, fucking wood cabins everywhere. Whenever I would just want to go into Sword and Shield and just stand around, it used to be glowy mushroom world, but now I just sit there in the snow and just breathe it in, have my Pokemon stand next to me and enjoy the winter. Is this really sad to say? Probably it's the little things that are important to me. Again, back to the Xbox video. My favorite memories in GTA were just rolling around in the snow with my friends, not even doing anything. I'm a winter guy, if you couldn't tell. It's below freezing in here technically, but I'm still wearing my short sleeves. I'm dedicated. Both of those DLCs together probably could have been a third version. The only issue is that if you play the game from the beginning with that DLC, the DLC happens in like the middle of the game. So you'll beat like three gyms and then be whisked off to this completely different island with a completely different side story and completely different mechanics and Pokemon and leveling. And then you'll go back to the main story and be like, what the fuck just ha What? I'm over leveled now. Imagine Kanto, but the Sevi Isles happen after the third gym and then after the sixth gym and then also at the end. I haven't played the game through like that, but I imagine anyone that does is gonna have a, a real wacky time. Also, I'd be a little upset if I went to the new area, I could walk with my Pokemon and then I went back to the main game and I couldn't walk with them. I don't know why they didn't add walking in the other wild areas because then it, why would you wanna go back to the main game? It was DLC and those two together, like I said, could have been in the third version, probably would have. I mean, maybe switched around a little more, but we didn't get a third version. 2020, we actually didn't get any new Pokemon game for the first time in a long while. The DLC filled that content hole. 2021, special anniversary for Pokemon. Not only the Pokemon's anniversary, but also Diamond and Pearl Sinnoh's anniversary. So it was highly likely we were going to get something that year. And then we got a little announcement video while I was in a car driving days to live across the country from everyone I knew. Um, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, Legend Arceus got announced. People have a lot of issues with Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, but I think the initial one was the chibi look, and it did take me a little bit to get used to it. I like the decision now, but of course, when I had Diamond and Pearl remakes in my head, it looked like Sword and Shield. Even when people were talking about the remakes before they came out, they're like, oh, the Great Marsh is gonna be the new wild area, because Ruby and Sapphire remakes had Megas, and Fire Red and Leaf Green had the... What did Fire and Leaf Green have? People were talking about how bad the games were before they even came out. The fact that Game Freak was outsourcing the game to Ilka, a company that hadn't really made a game, at least not a good one up until that point. They didn't like the chibi design, they didn't like that it was outsourced, and they definitely did not like that it was not based on Platinum. Now what most people know about uh, Gen 4 is that they have fond memories of those games, but what a lot of people don't remember is that Diamond and Pearl are pretty terrible and then all those issues were fixed in platinum if you have fond memories of diamond and pearl it's because you played it as a kid so did i if you go back and play it now it is the slowest experience ever and platinum is just a million times better with some things and of course omega ruby and alpha sapphire were based more on emerald fire and leaf green were based more on blue or yellow whatever all the best things from that heart gold and soul silver added crystal stuff into it brown diamond and shining pearl aside from some changes were basically one-to-one -one remakes of diamond and pearl and people were upset about that which is fair this one i'm kind of separating myself from the situation because like sword and shield i played as a gamer but brown diamond and shining pearl i played as a streamer which are different things. I played Sword and Shield on stream, but I didn't experience that journey as a streamer. It's completely different situations. Like for example, we're gonna talk about Legend Arceus a little bit later, but a big issue people have with that game is the lack of voice acting. And as I'm just, if I'm sitting alone in my room playing the game, I could understand that. I want them to talk to me. But as a streamer, I kind of like reading the dialogue. I like doing the little voices. I had fun playing Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl because I did a Nuzlocke on stream and I, it was my first ever official Nuzlocke and I did it with people watching. My honest opinion is I had a good time playing it, but I don't think that's a very substantial review because one, I love Pokemon and two, do I even follow the will of the gamer anymore? You know that bit of like Jerry Seinfeld, how it's like he used to do relatable comedy and now he's a multi-millionaire and he's not relatable anymore, so he's not really funny anymore. I feel like that. I used to have the voice of the gamer and now I'm up on my ivory tower like, oh, I remember what it was like to play a game without people watching you, without trying to entertain people. And I, I, do I have an opinion on this game? People leaked the game before it came out and they realized that a bunch of shit was missing from the game. The music sounded terrible. It went viral on Twitter. And then it was revealed that, oh, all that shit was fixed in a day one patch, which everyone was playing an unfinished version of the game. However, 
that probably just should have been in the game. I will say this, I had fun playing through it because I played Diamond as a kid, but that's a generation I never really wanted to replay. So all my memories and, you know, fond times of Diamond were me as a kid, not really understanding how the game works. So I played through Sinnoh, but I never did the contest. I never did the underground. I never did breeding. I never had ball capsules. So this remake to me was basically all new stuff. And I enjoyed all the side stuff. I enjoyed playing it. My one note, the thing that I complain about every stream and it was a constant issue that is really not an issue with any other Pokemon game is that you can move around freely in an environment that was not built for that. When I say it was copied one-to-one, -one, I mean like the map is still grid style and your character can move in the grid style, but it all could run. He's a freely moving character who can run in all eight directions and spin in circles. The thing is in a modern Pokemon game, when you can move in all directions, there's a giant landscape for you to run through. In a remake where you can move freely, there's like a one by one corridor and you're gonna keep hitting the wall. This is the first and only Pokemon game where I have tried to enter a, a building and miss the door like five times in a row. Of course you could play with the D-pad, but it feels really strange, all right? Control stick, hold B, run, you got it. And you just, you bump into everything. And this is not just a me issue. This was a prevailing issue. And because of this, you can skip so many things. The entire seventh gym puzzle, you could just skip it all by running diagonally. And that's not the only occurrence of that in this remake. I like that some Pokemon can follow you. That's a nice little touch. The models look iffy. Every time I'm like, oh, I liked this, I realize it's got some issues. People are really worried about having the experience share on because that's always an issue people talk about. But with that, I think the game was actually scaled pretty well. I mean, I was doing a Nuzlocke, like I said, but every time I got to a gym, I was like, man, I'm way over leveled. And then it turns out the gym trainer was actually the same level as me. As a game, it is a pretty good put together Pokemon game with fun stuff to do. As a remake, it looks better, I guess. What stuff do they add to make it worthwhile? I'm asking. If you couldn't tell by how rapid I'm going right now, I wrote the Sword and Shield part and then the rest I'm just kind of doing off the cuff because it's a fresher memory. I just remembered how much I hated the Poke Etch. On the DS, the Poke Etch is on the bottom screen. On the Switch, the Poke Etch takes up a large portion of the top right of the screen and you can't get rid of it. It only appears if you hit the Poke Etch button. So every time I loaded up the game, I'm like, I gotta be careful not to bump this button because if I do, it's gonna ruin the whole stream. There's gonna be a giant eyesore in the corner that I can't get rid of. I eventually just put the chat there because what else am I gonna do? By the way, if you're wondering how the Nuzlocke went it went like this it's all up to clint clint has been surprisingly reliable this whole time i have no idea why okay well i'm well, all we have left is clint this is literally all we got i don't know earth power i don't know do something I'm not cut out for this. I'm not. I thought I was, oh, this is gonna be my first ever Nuzlocke. Oh boy, I, I'm good at Pokemon. I'd be good for fucking whatever. Why am I smiling? Why am I still having a giddy time? Why am I not talking about this like I'm betrayed, like I'm upset? Diamond was my first game. Why am I talking about this game? Like it just kind of whatever. I think it was to fill a quota. If you look at the way these Pokemon games were released, Pokemon has never outsourced a mainline Pokemon game. And they've never released two mainline games in the same year, except for this year. So obviously, Sword and Shield at the end of 2019, DLC throughout 2020, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, end of 2021, Legends Arceus a couple months later, beginning of 2022, and then New Generation end of 2022. That's absurd. What I think happened, and this is a common theory, is that maybe the people working at Game Freak made Legends Arceus as the remake or to fill the Sinnoh slot. And they're like, we really like this. This is what this is the direction we want to go in. And then the more traditional executives in the company were like, people are expecting a normal remake. Don't make this game. We got to make a remake. And they're like, oh, but we really wanted to make this game. Is there any way we can make this game? And the only terms they could come to is, okay, we'll pay a different company to make the normal remake, but we can still release our game a couple months later, two months later. The reason I don't have as much hate for Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl is because I don't have enough care for Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. For me, it just kind of seemed like they were filling a quota and that's why I'm not upset.
because to me, I did get a really good Sinnoh remake or a really good story in Sinnoh. And that was Legends Arceus. Legends Arceus is not only the best Pokemon game in a long time, but it's the best thing to happen to Pokemon in a very, very long time. The game looks iffy, but again, graphics aren't important as long as it's fun. I'm back in streamer mode. A lot of people complain that there's so much dialogue, but no voice acting. And maybe that's an issue I see with Scarlet and Violet, but again, I like reading out the dialogue. I like doing my silly little voices. I like having children gather around and being like, oh, if you give a mouse a cookie, you know that shit. The more I go down this timeline of Generation 8, I'm speeding up rapidly because we are rapidly approaching Generation 9, and I only have really good things to talk about. The most stuff I had to say was about Sword and Shield, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, kind of a side of that, but that's more of a transition into Legends Arceus. What I can say about Legends Arceus is that I fucking loved it. So many quality of life changes, the way the Pokemon look in the pasture, the fact that there is a pasture, the catching mechanics, the moving mechanics. The only thing I have to say about Legend Arceus that other people haven't said is that it kind of made me feel a little iffy about Scarlet and Violet. There are so many cool things about how you battle and catch in Legend Arceus that are like, oh, this is the future of Pokemon games. This is the direction we're moving in that Scarlet and Violet kind of did away with. They're like, no, more traditional battles. We're going back to the way it was. To me, Scarlet Violet is adding a lot of cool stuff, but it seems like one step forward, two steps back. Of course, I'm sure I'll change my tune once I play Scarlet and Violet, but I haven't played it. I need to get reused to it. It's a more traditional Pokemon game, but Legend Arceus doesn't feel like a spin-off. It feels like what Pokemon should have been the whole time. It's gonna seem like I dislike it because I have more to say about negative than I do about positive, but just know I loved this game. I played it thoroughly. I had so much fun. Best Pokemon game in like... I was gonna say a decade, but that's longer than I thought. Uh, the new generation, best one. It's the important step forward we needed. We still need. I like that the Pokemon can all stand out next to you. That's like my favorite feature legitimately. I don't like that you can't pet them. I also don't like that in the pasture, only like four of them pop up. Like you don't need to show all of them. I get that that would fucking tank the quality of the game, but why even show some of them then? I love all the little side quests. I like the little check marks in the Pokedex and in the Pokedex, all the entries are written by Laventon because he's experiencing these Pokemon for the first time. And there's so many little things to do. Like I said, I beat the main game and it was fucking hard too. That was a hard battle, a harder battle than I had in a long time. People always talk about Ultra Necrozma, but I had no issue with that. I did have issue with Giratina in this one. The way they recontextualize the myth of Arceus and make it work and make him work as a physical creature. I love the movement options. I don't love that if you walk up a mountain that you could easily walk up, it, there's just an invisible wall. There's too many invisible walls in this game. Not that I need it to be a giant open area, but just like, Make the thing steeper so I can't get up there. Whenever you enter Braviary, you get fogged all the way around. It's like, what the, f what is happening? But aside from those little insignificant things, I love the main story. I love the side quest. I love all the little tasks you can do. I love the new Pokemon. I love how the old Pokemon look. I love the way battles work. I love the way catching works. I love how you can organize and customize your character. I like your little living space. I like how they recontextualize newer Pokemon in this older location. I love this game. Not perfect, but goddamn, it's the closest we're gonna get to my perfect Pokemon game. And now, I should have put this on for the Sinnoh part. Scarlet and Violet. Now, initially, I was gonna end off with Legends Arceus and just immediately jump to day one of Scarlet and Violet and Oz. I am excited and getting kind of uh, cold standing here. Let's talk about what we think the game's gonna be. Initial thoughts. I like terrestrializing as a gimmick like as a battle gimmick i think it's really fun i'm a little bummed we're not getting any new battle forums obviously we're getting a lot of new forms i didn't look at any leaks but i did see the official stuff they showed off and we are getting regional forms and new evolutions and stuff that's similar wiggler but oh not wiggler that's mario wiglet by the way my theory before the game comes out before i see anything about the game is that it's kind of like an angler fish situation where that thing is not actually the pokemon it's like a little trap so then when you go towards it you get sucked in the sand and there's like a creature and that's like its head that's my theory. And like I said, I'm cautiously optimistic. I really wanted to do Sword and Shield multiplayer, be able to run around a giant area with my friends. And it looks like Scarlet and Violet, you might be able to do that. Day one, I'm gonna have a bunch of friends that we could all play together and do the multiplayer stuff. And I hope it works. I really, I wanna give them a win. It seems like they picked and chose the best parts of Sword and Shield and Legends Arceus to combine to make the best open world. It is an open world, open adventure Pokemon game. We'll see how true that is and how much you can actually spread your adventure. But like I said, regardless, any new generation is fun for me because I like experiencing new Pokemon. I like catching them all. I like doing new stuff. I personally kept myself 
as blind as I could. Don't type in Pokemon in the YouTube search bar because I'm hyped right now. I'm like, I want to watch Pokemon videos. And just a leak was one of the first things. People just don't care, I guess. The games look great, by the way. You know, people always complain about Pokemon graphics, the way landscapes work. Um, but it seems like they're using completely new models that were initially used in Pokemon Snap, and those models look beautiful. I'm glad they're finally moving on from these X and Y models. I'm excited. I didn't want the video to be majority about Generation 9, but it looks like that's uh, what it did. This video may be longer than I wanted it to be. Oops. My main goal is to talk about Scarlet and Violet, give my initial opinions. Three years ago, I opened up this Sword and Shield double pack and did a video, did my little review on it. And now three years later, doing Scarlet and Violet. The only reason I'm doing this video now is because I want to keep this tradition up. And maybe three years down the line, I'll do it again. I don't know where I will be. I don't know what I'll be doing. But I know... I'm never gonna stop loving Pokemon. My little guys come with me. This is my favorite, by the way. My favorite category of Pokemon is little fucked up purple guys. Let's go to day one. That was day one. I just played through the first five hours of Pokemon Scarlet and I had an alternative person playing through the first five hours of Pokemon Violet and they're more or less the same and you're never gonna guess how far we got in five hours. I said two things in the opening. One of those things is that I really like Sun and Moon despite its very long opening. I can look past it. Second thing I said is I don't really mind the lack of voice acting because I get to read out all the characters lines. Five hours into this game we got to the school, that's like the selling point of the game, or the important story, uh, and did no gym badges. We went to two towns, I believe. And then by the time the fifth hour hit, the person in the game said, Oh, time to start our adventure. So, I may sound out of breath or like exhausted now. I played for five hours opposed to the normal three, because I like doing five on the first day. And I did a, I thought I'd do a squeaky voice for the rival character. Turns out the rival character just never, never shuts up. And I almost lost my voice, and I didn't think I was even going to be able to do this part. It's also very hot in here. I'm Nimona. Normally, I live in the school dorms, but home is here. What do you say, new neighbor? I don't like her. Want to be I friends? More than one percent. What if I say no? My opinion, basically, is the opinion I already thought, like, w the way I thought the game was going to turn out. It's a really fun game that has a lot of issues that don't necessarily impact gameplay. First of all, I like that when the game starts out, you can customize your character. This seems like such a bare minimum thing, but it's a first for Pokemon. There's a lot of stuff in this game that seems like an crazy improvement that have been in other RPGs before. There's this new way of grinding. I don't know what it's called, but we call it passive battling, where you just send out your Pokemon and it auto battles a wild Pokemon that's weak for you, so you don't have to keep battling it over and over again. Not only does it make encounters fun and them easier to avoid, but it also makes grinding like a thing you want to do. The reason it took five hours is a combination of the story stretching out in explanations and us just fucking about in the open area it gave you. It wasn't even the actual open world, just that one area we ran around for so long just having our Pokemon act passively battle stuff while we looked for items. We legit made our own fun. The lack of voice acting doesn't make it seem like an old game, because some games just don't have that. However, it's weird that so many of the models look great, and then so many of them have serious problems. Every shadow in this game, it seems like... You know that one bit of, like, jump fluff in Pokemon Coliseum or something? Its shadow is, like, super polygonal and just cubes? It's like that. Every shadow in this game is pixelated, and it seems like they just ported over shadows directly from, like, X and Y, which I know they couldn't have done. The shadows just look bad. And it's weird because all the new Pokemon models look really good, but if you battle a wild Pokemon, like a Pokemon in the wild, it does the zoom in on it before the battle starts, and then it transitions into the battle, and the zoom in, the Pokemon is low poly. Like, if Pokemon look low poly from far away or in certain situations, to to save on the game from exploding. That's good, but the camera focuses on the low poly Pokemon. I don't understand how they didn't notice that. There's a lot of stuff that isn't even that big of a deal, but it happened in the opening of the game and there's 
Do you think you would have noticed it? Some of the cutscenes are just straight up broken. There's an area at the beginning where a bunch of clothes are hung, and whenever you see clothes hung up on a little wire in a video game, you're like, oh, I'm gonna walk through it and see how the fabrics work in the game. Maybe I was expecting too much of Pokemon, but the fabric didn't move. I just clipped right through it. I started my adventure. I named myself Apple because all my Pokemon characters start with A, and because of that, I named my Fort Coco. I chose Fort Coco Chomper. Not only does it mean also pear, it's not a pear, it's a pepper, I know, but the second ever starter I got was the Totodile named Chomper and Chomper is the little accent so it's a little reference and also it's set in Spain. There were about two new Pokemon I saw that I hadn't already known from the announcements but just so much of the fun we had was just running around and being like, oh, did you see this Pokemon over here? This one's over here. Like I said with most Pokemon stuff, we made our own fun and the story kind of just trudges along behind us. Why we were running around could have been a combination of multiple things. It could have been a bunch of new stuff we wanted to discover. I wanted to get all the items. It was an open world it let you run around in. But I think part of why we didn't keep going in the story is because we really didn't want to. We had more fun on our own and we were kind of dreading every time the rival showed up. We audibly, what's it called? groaned whenever she showed up. I don't think she's like a terrible character, but she talks nonstop. And maybe it's my fault for continuing to read all the dialogue. But like I said, five hours and the school, the start of the game. Also, a school is a weird concept for a Pokemon game. You go into the classroom and after you do this little cutscene, it opens up and says, hey, you can go to math class. You can do home economics. You can go to biology class. None of that sounds fun. I said in a previous video that if I had, if I lived forever, I would never go back to fucking high school. And now Pokemon in my perfect escapism world, I'm in school, I'm taking classes. None of them are mandatory, but it's just a weird choice. The rival's also kind of passive aggressive. I don't know if it was intentional, but that's the way we read it. And I think it's funnier that way. I can't believe you actually chose for Coco. I mean, like way to make the perfect choice for you. What is that supposed to be? She's like backhand complimenting me. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think she called you dumb. <laughs> yeah, of course you would choose Foy Coco. That's so like you. <laughs> the pop-in's really bad, but that was a thing with Sword and Shield as well. Obviously, all the notes I wrote were just negative ones because whenever something bad happened, I typed it down, but I didn't write down every time I was having fun. The movement was a little weird. Before you learn how to run or before it gives you the ability to run, it moves so stilted. You would bump into stuff. If you're inside a building, you're gonna run into shit all the time. There were multiple times where the camera clipped under the ground. So when I started this, like the opening explanation, I did a little joke of like, oh, I'm sure I'll think it's a 10 out of 10 when the game first starts and then every night it'll go down. But really, we didn't get to do that much in a five hour interval on the first night. I think actually night two or three may be way better than this. There's this cave that the second I stepped into it, it lit up, and then the second you step out, it, the lighting is really weird. But again, it doesn't really affect the gameplay, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't notice it. There's ice cream and different food in this game. I really don't know what it does yet. I still have not fully grasped, but I like that there's a lot of stuff going on in this game. The weird thing is, I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but the linear parts are too linear, too much story. That is a bad thing. But the open parts were kind of daunting because your map doesn't cover a lot of it. And it's kind of hard to see where you're going. There might be too much in this game. Of course, that's not a bad thing. I love when there's a lot of stuff to explore, but I really, I thought I was going to get like a full review over five nights of play in this, but it may take like weeks. Not only is grinding fun this time around, but you get these little like materials from the Pokemon every time you beat one in a battle like that. So you can stock up on that. And then there's a little stand where you can trade those in for league points, which can be used to buy things aside from Poke Bucks, Poke Dollars. I don't know what it's called. The downside of making grinding a fun way to get levels up and an easy way to get money means that there's really no reason to do any trainer battles in this game. There's guys standing at the end of an area. It's like, oh, if you fought all the trainers, you get this special item and the special item is a TM for Thunder Wave. Like as an incentive, getting a gift is cool, but gameplay wise, there's nothing to like make you want to do trainer battles. Obviously, they're really easy at the beginning of the game, but the most fun I had with a trainer battle is right before our rival battle, which we didn't even know. The friend I was playing online with, I'm like, let's just battle each other with our teams. And we had a great time. Speaking of which, the online is incredible. Like, again, little things that you wouldn't think are the case, but they are. Pretty much the entire game, you can run around with multiple friends, and I did get multiple friends to play with, and we played the same game alongside each other. They would run over there and be like, hey, there's an item over here. I'd run over here and say, hey, there's a Pokemon over here. And we'd, like, go to each other's places. I said that I was burned by Sword and Shield, how you couldn't even interact with your friends in the wild area. 
but what I didn't expect is that you could see the same Pokemon. So if you do find someone in the wild area who's actually next to you somehow, your wild areas are not the same. You will always clip through each other and you'll have completely different Pokemon spawning. But in Scarlet and Violet, if there is a Bonsly right in front of you and you're, the person you're playing with is standing next to you, they will see that exact same Bonsly. Even Pokemon Go doesn't have that. That's insane. And I don't mean they both find a Bonsly. I mean, you guys will see that same Bonsly together. It may be a little thing, and maybe other games have already done this better, but for Pokemon, that's huge. I think the online aspect of this is going to be the most fun. I've always shared my Pokemon experiences with multiple friends, but this seems like the best way to do it. Pokemon has always gone hand-in-hand -hand with multiplayer, but this is legitimately a game-changer. The review I heard before I played the game is it seems like a fantastic game with fantastic infrastructure. It's just poorly optimized, and I cannot agree more. Pokemon follow you in this, but unfortunately, it hasn't really been fixed. The issue with Sword and Shield is that you could run far ahead, and your Pokemon wouldn't catch up to you and just despawn. That still happens but they're never that far away from you. It's just like, you know, it could have been fixed. It's not a huge problem. I talked about the stuff I loved and obviously a Pokemon adventure, all the new Pokemon catching was really fun. I like the new, I don't like the name so much, but Flamigo, I'm gonna get used to it. The thing is I nicknamed all my Pokemon, so I'm not gonna remember the actual name. So I gotta start studying. Most of the stuff I noted as like negatives don't really matter. It's just like, you know, it looks iffy. If you're trying to pitch this game to someone who doesn't like Pokemon, they're not going to want to play it, even though it is really fun because it kind of looks bad. However, there are a couple things that affected gameplay, and that's all I care about. If the gameplay is good, I don't care what it looks like. However, some issues. There were multiple invisible walls, and I don't mean like a steep incline or you would try and walk off the path and a text box would appear like, hey, you can't go here yet. There's a cave where you, an important story cave where you're following an important story, the box legendary, whatever. It's spoilers, who cares? And there's a straight path and there's fork paths. And it's like, oh cool, collecting items. One of them you can go down, but one of them, it just stops you. It doesn't say, hey, you can't go here or there's not a steep incline. It's just legitimately an invisible wall there for no reason other than to make sure you're going forward. There's nothing I hate more in a video game than invisible walls. If you don't want me to go there, put something there. Especially in Pokemon that has like a ton of ways to block your path and has for decades. I thought that the fact that it wasn't similar to Legends Arceus was a couple steps back. I think this game is a good amalgamation or a good combination of the best parts of Sword and Shield and the best parts of Legends Arceus. That being said, sending out your Pokemon feels janky. Maybe I just haven't gotten used to it yet, but I did play the game for five hours. The way it works is there's, say, a Pokemon here. You can press the right trigger and you will throw out your Pokemon. If there's a Pokemon around you, it will heat seek wherever it is. So if this Pokemon's over here and you throw in this direction, it'll still go over here. You can't aim correctly. You can like Z-target stuff, but it doesn't really help. The most frustrated I've been while playing this game, aside from dialogue, obviously, is... I'll, I'll paint you a picture. There was the new Paldean Wooper sitting right here in the water and an Azuril right in front of it. So I'm like, oh shit, I want that Paldean Wooper. So I aimed at the Paldean Wooper. I really want to catch this thing. Hold on. What? Which of you are not dying? <laughs> Don't fight the Azuril. I kind of hate the auto-targeting. I was pissed. And again, this was my day one review. I haven't done enough of the throwing with the actual targeting. Maybe I'm wrong, you know? Maybe it controls fantastic and it's just a little janky. It takes me a little bit to get used to it. But that's where I'm doing these by multiple days. So my day one review with my Pokemon. Should I just list them off? Foycoco, Chomper, uh, Wiglet, Tapeworm, Spupa, Olive... Palmy, Pomegranate. You can sense the theme. My character's name was Apple. I forget the new spider's name, but I... I don't remember what I named it. Welcome to the team, Grape. You can't enter that name. Oh, because it has... Oh. That's fucked up. That's mean. I mean, I get why, but... Use a different A. Will it let you use, like, a... Like oh, a like an a accent a, a? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> What's the Spanish A? Is it, it's, it's top to bottom, right to left, right? I think so. I understand why they did this, but... Okay, I can name it Grappe. Welcome to the team, Grappe. There's the flying Pikachu. I didn't name it yet. The Whooper I named Coconut. There's the pre-evolution of the uh, Lemur with the spray paint. I just named it Mort for obvious reasons. I'm really coming after the fucking Theorizer's neck. I'm sure there's other stuff I'm forgetting that aren't as recognizable, but I've been catching all the stuff that is new to me or I've never used on a team before. But as of right now, I'm sure you've seen clips throughout this to like sprinkle in like, oh, how it felt. My day one review is... I am excited to see how fun the game gets. It's got fantastic infrastructure, 
I haven't really gotten to the open area yet, but what I experienced of the smaller area, it seems like a lot of fun. And I really hope the story characters kind of leave you alone a little bit, because again, there's open aspects of it. I was surprised actually how the catching tutorial and like battling tutorial, they just let you do it. I was so, I would groan, you know, I leaned back in my chair like, oh shit, they're gonna teach us how to catch. But you get to do it yourself. That's a big jump. I wanna say like Pokemon's growing up, but it's starting to realize that kids are a lot smarter than people give them credit for. So day one review, it's going to be fun. And if I come in here, I'm gonna cut right now and go to day two, and at day two I'm pissed, then day one me is gonna be very disappointed. I hope day two me had a better time. I played for five hours. I'm losing my voice. I might not even have it tomorrow, so we'll see. Uh, day two. I gotta transition somehow. Day two. I broke it. Okay, okay, okay. All right, okay, all right. We're in trouble. So I was correct in the sense that I knew the game would open up more after day one. I wouldn't have to deal with as much dialogue. I could do the more open areas, and that's true. Uh, my timeline for this game is in shambles. I didn't have an exact amount of days I wanted to play this, but I was rounding and saying, okay, I will play the game for five nights, right? Five nights of Freddy's, ooh. Um, and then review every night, and that'll be a decent amount of the game. Like I said, the first five hours, day one, we got to the opening, basically. This day, which I was gonna, it was gonna be three hours, but it actually took us four, because I got stuck on a battle. We did one gym fight, one titan, one team star battle. There are five team star battles, five titans, and eight gyms in the game. Hmm. If we really keep our noses down and just keep running forward, we can maybe bump it out in six or seven nights, but... I don't want to do that. That doesn't seem like a good way to enjoy the game. There have been less and less problems. The main difference between the first night and the second night is that we got the Koridon and Miraidon, where you can, like, traverse and, you know, control those characters, and there's a lot of clippy, glitchy things you can do. There was a bit where there was a Terra Crystal here and a Cliffside, and I jumped in the middle and got stuck there for, like, 30 seconds, and then the game faded to black and just spawned me somewhere else. I legit got stuck between a rock and a hard place. And, of course, one of the people we were playing with got to a later area by doing a skip even before he got either of those just by sliding a certain way. There's a lot of jumping exploits. Whenever you add jumping and platforming to a Pokemon game, there's always going to be ways to, you know get to places you're not supposed to. Ironically, the thing I complained about in Legends Arceus is that there's too many invisible walls would maybe help this, but again, there needs to be a good middle ground between the two. And weirdly enough, I think Scarlet and Violet is a good middle ground between Sword and Shield and Legends Arceus. That being said, now eight hours into this game, I've not done a single raid. There's a lot of weird online stuff. We've been primarily playing the game online, so maybe I would have a different opinion if I was playing it by myself, but I'm gonna notice the online stuff. I'm comparing this a lot to the Sword and Shield review. Whenever I talk about the Sword and Shield review in past tense, I'm like, oh man, I only played it for one night. That's not enough to grasp the situation. But Sword and Shield is a very short game, so I think one five-hour night of that may be the equivalent of like five nights for this, so I'm going down the same path. This game is way more open, and I may have to do this review without having a full grasp of the game and obviously your opinion changes throughout the years the more you play that game the more you get down deep into the little in-betweens but i like it i'm having fun two things one thing you can't spectate people's battles even if they're in your little online group and that's something you can do in every other pokemon game even if you're not in a group with them you could watch other people's pokemon battles it's possible you can do that again comparing to the sword and shield review when i was playing sword and shield at the time i was like oh there's no way we can't go together in the wild area. I'm sure we missed something. I gave them the benefit of the doubt. I was wrong, or actually they were wrong. I was in the right. So it's possible that there is something you can do to do that, that we missed. Another thing that's really strange and more similar to the Sword and Shield raids is we all have different Terra Crystal raids, but we can't play in each other's. Like we ran around this entire game for four hours with all three of us together. We could do everything in the game together, but when it comes to a raid, you can't invite your friends. You could even do that in Sword and Shield where you can't run around with your friends. Again, I could be wrong. This could be something we're missing, but we could not find a way to all do a raid together. I know we're in different versions, but they were both playing Violet and they couldn't even play together. And what makes it more annoying is that you can go up to a crystal and it'll be like, oh, this is your friend's crystal. You can't use this. So why is it even there? I there has to be something we missed. That's such a weird line to draw. There has to be. I, I'm i gonna come back day three and be like, oh no, we didn't miss something, or yep, I'm dumb, we missed something. But either way, 
It's annoying. On top of that though, the time really flew. I mean, it flew last time, even at five hours. I'm like, man, oh, whew, I'm getting a little exhausted, but yeah, I like, uh, this is a good time to end. And we did have a good time to end this time around, but I was planning on going for three hours and I was like, I kind of want to keep going. Legit, I think five hours is a good round time. Especially if I'm only playing on stream, I think this is a good game to just settle down in like your bed and just grind away for hours. Unfortunately, that is not the nature of the streams I do. I'm sweating a lot too. It's been getting increasingly hot in here. I feel like this couch, it's been getting more and more soaked. There's been leaks all around the ship, but whatever. I'm sure the couch will, will be fine. Um, if next time I'm not on the couch, then there has been an issue. Obviously you list the most annoying things, but aside from that, I had a lot of fun. I really like the Titan raid, the way you do that. I really like fighting the team star thing. It was legitimately difficult by the way. And same with the gym battle. The gym battle wasn't hard, but I love me some little puzzles. I like the little sun floor thing before it. Aw, frick. Aw, oh, jeez, man. I look at they're flopping around behind you. I'm stuck. Let they me go, you. let me go. They actually trapped you, that's crazy. I've never seen that. Get, I, okay, there you go. <laughs> I got six. Come on. This is my team, by the way. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm oh no! Fan. Oh crap! Get no! I want to see. Oh no! It's spreading. <laughs> Help! I'm a little bummed that all these big badge situations don't have like grunts or like smaller, you know, down the totem pole people you could face. But like I said. Doing trainer battles in this game isn't nearly as fun as doing everything else, so I understand why they moved away from it. I'm fairly certain, because the game is open world, you can go in any order and the difficulty scales with you, but that first Team Star battle, I was viciously underleveled. I understand uh, the situation. I am only playing on stream, I'm only playing when I'm recording, and my other two friends wanted to continue playing, but they didn't want to make any progress so we could all be on the same thing. So they were just grinding and battling stuff in between, so they got super overleveled in between streams and they still struggle with the battle. That's not a bad thing, by the way. I think it's great. It's just really interesting that this is the first Pokemon game where like the first, I guess the third badge I did was legitimately difficult. Except for maybe like Whitney, but that's not even because of leveling. There were things that were legitimately double my level. I imagine you're supposed to grind more, but even the auto battles, I'm losing. I keep listening to the negative stuff, but just know that I did have a lot of fun running around with all my friends, finding new Pokemon. All the basic Pokemon stuff is really fun, raising battles together, having your funny little moments. It's weird, Cloth with the big crab thing, for whatever reason, its exclamation point will appear before it does. So it'll, like a wild Pokemon in older games, just appear out of nowhere and jump at you. Not like purposefully, it's just like, because it's a big model, it takes a while to load in. But I thought it was cute. Thanks. All right, fork to, okay. Oh, there was a Cloth hiding under the sign. It, this is Breath of the Wild. Yeah, Hold chest. on, I'm trying to kill this claw. Yeah, I think it might evolve into a version exclusive, so... Oh, shit. This thing's bodying my team. So much- too much is happening. I'm- I'm running from this. Caden, you can catch this claw. Alright, it's... I can't run away. Uh, it's holding me ransom. Uh, huh. I'll Look, let you read the, the thing. The little rock me. terra thing looks like a coliseum. I died. Great. Fantastic. I'm glad I did that. Yeah. Oh, underground. This one claw is... is killed half of my team. I'm right here. Oh, come on. Everything I have is weak to rock. There's you better get wiped out. No, it's okay. Right. I could I could fix this. Well, it's because most of my team is poison sport. and fire. I'm like a gym leader. Just got one type. Yeah. Okay, what if he I just round. what if I just catch it though? Can we do That's away the with way out? <laughs> Kaden, do you want a cloth? It's pretty one. strong. I one. Okay, well I caught another one. <laughs> Great. Almost That's took out my thinking. entire team. If I didn't catch it, I would have been dead. Sweeper. Online issues are a little iffy. We clipped a lot, but I don't think the game is like broken, broken. My review has basically not changed. It is a fun game that's a little broken. Of course, this time around, we were more open and we did our own stuff. So there was less dialogue. There were less cutscenes that looked kind of iffy. Obviously, there was still dialogue that you had to deal with. But still, I like this one a lot better, which is what I said would happen day one. It looks better this time around. Obviously, there's those really nasty pop-in issues, but aside from that, it looks way better. My ranking for day one, if I'm putting them in like order, I had day two was way more fun game-wise. I had a lot of fun in the opening of the game, but we didn't really get to do a lot. I don't want to run these little in-between reviews too long because in the video, if I do do like 10 days of doing this, it's going to be way too long, but... My review is, I feel like I did, said a lot of nothing in this and I've only been complaining, but I did have fun. It's important everyone knows I had fun. Let's go to day three. Uh, this is like propped on top of something. So if I throw this, I'm gonna fuck something up. At least my trusty couch is here. I'm gonna fight a doctor. There's a doctor over here. That's a doctor? Isn't it? Oh, yeah, maybe it it's like not. Never mind, he's wearing a cowboy, cowboy hat. <laughs> oh, and he's singing. 
Hello. That's He's wearing <laughs> denim. That is not a doctor. <laughs> uh, are you a doctor? Sound of healing up Pokemon at the Pokemon Center. I'm a nice guy. Well, maybe he's a doctor. He's wearing ripped blue jeans. The musician. It's a girl. Oh, no. Ah, uh, if it takes one more poison, it's dead. Is he gonna evolve? Please evolve. Yeah, I have not. three great balls I can use. This will be a oh, good- Oh, Ah, oh, this thing's dead. <laughs> oh, but it's got a funny name. Well, great. Good. It would rather die than be on my team. Well, you gotta it broke out. Throw and... some balls. No, it's dead. I threw a ball. It broke out and killed itself. That's what I'm saying. Oh, it would. No. It would rather die than be on my team. I'm in the middle of catching a guy. I'm not far away from the trainer that we we both fought the the cowboy doctor. Guy. Oh, the denim man. Cowboy doctor. The denim <laughs> the cowboy yeah. doctor. I just realized. I, I called mine after after the Honky Tonk Man, and I just realized that I made the white one honky. <laughs> it finally happened. Not the couch, but the couch is also important. I'm basically in the spaceship equivalent of a bathroom stall right now, so it's gonna sound a little echoey. No couch, but you, I already said that. When I said it finally happened, what I meant was Experienced a lot of glitches tonight, which is weird because the stream started with someone coming in and asking my opinion And I said my opinion in the first five minutes I think the game is very much playable all the glitches people are talking about I have an experience and they're honestly not that bad. They're just a little goofy Tonight's glitches were annoying. It could have just been an internet thing because again away from my couch away from the ship So uh, the Wi-Fi could have been a little different maybe a different connection issue But the person I was playing with opened the map and then their game hard froze and then when I brought them back into the Union Circle, we both went to the same location on the map and then joined together. And then when we opened the map, it had moved us like a couple towns back, which is a minor inconvenience, but it's still very strange. Now we go to... to... This I is Mesagoza. Wait. Oh yeah. How did we end up here? Wait, what the fuck? Wait, what? And then later in that same stream, I decided to jump into a hole and it, was, it wasn't it was like a pit. It was just like a place you could walk around and I'm like, huh, I wonder where I am. I opened up my map. I didn't hard freeze, but I couldn't move at all like because other stuff was moving. So I, you know, I soft froze, which to me feels arguably worse because then you have that little glimpse of maybe I can get out of this. Whereas if it, if it hard crashed, you could just leave. I was like, there's gotta be a way I can fix this. Turns out there wasn't and I had to reset. I really fucked up the sandwich. It's a fucked up looking sandwich. It's basically just ham and pickle. That's gross. A tasty apple original. There we go. Mmm. Ah, you know, that's my recipe. The, what makes it an apple original is that the top bun is not connected and the little uh, flag goes through the pickle. I do want to correct myself though, because we did figure out a way to play different uh, terrestrial raids with our group. It's just a little thing, like a little Xbox thing. It's like, oh, this person's doing this and you have to join them. Of course, if you're in a cutscene when that happens, they have to rejoin. So you, there's no like quick input. Or again, I could be wrong. We haven't looked that much into it, but I wanted to go back like from day, I think we're on day three now. Day two, I was wrong. You can play the raids with your group, with your friends. It's very easy to get turned around in this game this was an issue through the two previous nights but i didn't really notice i mean i did notice it but i didn't feel it was worth mentioning this time around the map just spins randomly and of course you can hit the stick in to like center it but we were like oh i'm over here i'm by this landmark the map doesn't mark everything as important and it spins and you your north could be a completely different north from the person you're talking to that's a foot away from you it's very easy to get turned around in this game I, originally i thought it was because the area was just super vast but it's that on top of the map being super unhelpful. I think the mini map is also a little bit too zoomed in and as far as I know there's no way to fix that. There's a bunch of little stuff and most of the time it really isn't that big of a deal so I'm only going to mention the ones that affected gameplay. There was a Pokemon that I think leveled up at like level 22 and I used the passive battling you know sending it out letting it fight for it to level up and then it got to level 22 and didn't evolve and it didn't evolve when I went back into battle I had to give it a rare candy and then it evolved even though it was a level later It's because I guess your Pokemon can't evolve when you're passively battling Which seems like a huge oversight because it can in every other form in the game Even if you're not using that Pokemon Well, that was all the broken stuff of the five hours we accidentally played we were aiming for three Um, it happened 
it was frequent in the sense that it was all in this one night, but considering this is night three and almost like averaging 15 hours, not that bad. That being said, it shouldn't happen in the game. It doesn't ruin the game, but I I would be remiss if I didn't mention it because it is a flaw of the game. So I'm only going to talk about the positive stuff because I do actually have a plan now. Last time I said I had a vague idea of how many days I wanted to play it, how much I can get done. Night two, we got a Titan a gym and a team star thing done this stream we also got a titan a gym and a team star thing done oh my god i'm cursed and the consensus is still the same the gym was fine i like the puzzle i like the little titan guy and the team star battle was really fucking difficult the team star battles both of them so far are the only battles in the game i've actually had to use strategy and had to use multiple items and had to look up how much pp each move had i had to stall out the they were both legitimately hard and but that's not a bad thing that's really fun the team star battles have been really all of them have been fun i came across the electric streamer uh gym leader and i thought she was really funny too especially because like little donations appeared and i thought that was really funny because of how sad that is. My theory about Wiglet being an anglerfish is incorrect, but I have a new theory. There's a little hacker guy. I'm gonna spoil the story, by the way. You should have expected this. There's a little hacker guy on your phone who is helping you defeat Team Star. And then whenever you're done talking to him, Penny, this random character, just kind of appears on screen and somehow knows the name of that hacker and everything he just told you. So my theory is that Penny is the hacker person and also Penny was in charge of Team Star at some point. She's orchestrating the whole thing. She's a menace. It was Penny. That's my theory. Let's see how correct I am. So the plan going forward is to every night do a Titan, a Team Star battle, and then uh, a gym battle. And originally, I was like, okay. We did two of the five, right? There's five Titans, five stars, eight badges, obviously. So we did two. So the next three nights, we can do Titan, Jim, Star over those three and then be done with all the Titans, be done with all the Star. And then the night after that, maybe somehow do three gym badges and i was like uh maybe we could fit three gym badges and if we really rush i don't think we have to rush they said on the website and in the trailers this was an open world game where you could choose wherever you go i'm not certain that's true because the first gym we went to was a little higher level than us and then um my one friend who didn't play with us tonight but was playing just separately by himself went the other direction and the gym was far weaker. Not just like, oh, they had weaker Pokemon. I mean, the level dipped so hard. In the first big city, Mestigoza, I think there is a left exit and a right exit. We chose the right exit because it looked cooler and everything was over leveled for a little bit, but then we eventually beat it. And then at the end of this stream, we're like, okay, well, uh, there's stuff over on the left. Let's go to the left. And we had just beat the Team Star thing who had level 30s. And then we took our first step into the left side and all the wild Pokemon Pokemon were level four. So I don't think the game actually scales with what direction you go. I think we just chose the hard direction and now the rest of the game, we're just gonna body because we are increasingly over leveled. And we're not even gonna be punished for it because we did technically already beat two gym badges, meaning that the level, so maybe you can do that in any order, but then why is it still easy in that area? My review, I guess, is maybe the gyms and the titans scale to your level, but the wild Pokemon do not. So before I was kind of holding on to the hope that, oh, maybe we can get a bunch of gym badges done really quick. Now I'm fairly certain that next stream we will do more than just the three, if not a later stream, because uh, apparently we did the game we can do in any order in the wrong order. But I think that's not a bad thing. I'm going to have fun doing that. I'm going to have fun bodying everything. I like my team so far. I, I want to introduce you because the last couple nights I've been deciding which ones I want to use. I think I have a set group at least. Let me go. I don't know if he evolves, but he's really been helping us out. He's he's the big kicker. I started obviously. I got him to his second evolution, but I don't know what the third one is, and I am very scared because I have not heard anything, but I've heard grumblings. Whenever you bring up Foycoco or any of the starters, people kind of just slump into their own shoulders. So. I guess we'll see. This cloth uh, named Sweeper, this wasn't the first cloth I catched. I named the first one Bugaboom because the two Titans we fought so far seemed heavily based on different Mario Galaxy bosses. This one I named Sweeper because it killed five members of my team and the only way to prevent it from killing my entire team was to catch it. It literally threatened me until I put it on my team. And then I used him to stall out the entire Team Star Fire thing and he basically single-handedly did it. He's a monster. Of course, Claude Sire, I think his name is, the evolution of the new pooper, uh, helped the most in this new star battle because it's poison and he's just the strongest on my team right now. He's a good ace to have. That being said, this little car guy, I forget his name. I named it Lowrider because of the uh, 
George Lopez theme. I got stuck on the poison fight for a long time, or I didn't have to retake it, but it was like going a long time. And then I got to Muck, and I'm like, oh shit, what am I gonna do with Muck? Because this little guy was under leveled. Turns out Muck only had one move that could damage him, and it didn't do a lot, so I just kept giving him super potions. And then Muck ran out of PP and struggled itself to death. This is legitimately the little engine that could, because it was like 10 levels below what we were fighting. Five. Did I pick a sixth thing? The six is like an alternating slot of whatever stuff I want to evolve. Because it turns out a lot of stuff in the evolves in this game. I don't know what I just said. I spoke over myself. There's obviously still a lot of dialogue. There was less dialogue with the gym leader or the gym stuff around it. I like the gym leader's dialogue. I like the Titan dialogue because, again, important story stuff. I like the little dog. We're getting more story about, um, I forget his name. Arvin and his dog. I'm invested in that. I'm invested in the gym battles. I really like the team star battles, but I really don't care about the story because they lump so much onto you. If you're one of the people that doesn't want to do everything in the game and you just want to pick one of the three paths, just know that if you don't like a lot of dialogue, the team star path stops you dead in your tracks for like 10 minutes in a row. Every time. I'm gonna say the same thing. Aside from that, I have the baseline of I had a lot of fun. There were a lot of glitches this time around. I think I still had more fun night two than night three, but this one was a big challenge, which doesn't normally feel like it doesn't feel good to be facing a challenge, but I'm sure days down the line, I'd be like, that was really fun that I had to really strategize through that. Still a good game though. I'm still having a great time. My consensus has not changed. It is a good game that has issues. It just before the issues were just kind of graphical. Now the issues are legitimately making the game a little less fun. We'll see how we do in night four. I have a feeling night four, we're gonna body everything and make an obscene amount of progress, but alternatively, we'll have less fun because it'll be too easy. Nobody likes playing an easy game. All right, whatever, night four. It, the situation may get worse. The couch could have exploded and spread a fire, who knows? What am I even doing? This whole thing is trying to find a good middle ground between review and initial thoughts. Looking back on the Sword and Shield one, I'm like, okay, I clearly did not have a full grasp of the game, so I could not give a full review. And I thought on this, the more days I play, oh, you know, when I'm, when I beat the game, I'll have my review, but I can give little updates in the days between, but I feel like I have nothing to say going forward with each individual day. You wanna know what happened today? I did everything on stream today I needed to do. I beat a Titan, I beat a Star, I beat a Gym, and they were all a lot of fun, and the same thing happened as last time. This seems like a diss, but it's not. This is all fun. This is all good gameplay, but really, I have nothing to add to my review. The nature of having your initial thoughts is that you fully do not understand the game yet. You don't have everything to say. Of course, after the game is done, I want to avoid spoilers, so when I'm done, I'm going to go not into the code. I'm not a coder. I'm not a hacker, but I will know. It'll be on the internet. I will be able to look everything up, and then I can form my opinion on top of that. So it's really a question of whether this is a review or whether this is my first impressions, because if it is my first impressions, then I'm going to fall in the same pit I did last time, and three years down the line with the next generation, I'm just going to have to talk about this generation again and be like, okay, well, actually, I was wrong when I said this. Two nights ago, I said you couldn't enter each other's raids, and then the night after that and the night before this, I figured out you could. So a lot of stuff seems like I know what I'm I'm talking about and know oh there's got to be some way around it and then it is there's just a lot we don't understand yet from what i'm playing the simplism the simplistic nature of the way i'm playing the game i'm having fun that's all i have to say they're introducing new pokemon at a rate that isn't overwhelming and it seems like they're only new but they're introducing them at a rate mixed in with all the stuff you already know that you're like oh man you have to kind of have to sidetrack yourself to catch the new stuff because it's all interesting Unfortunately, this time around, this night, most of the stuff we found was already evolutions of stuff we already knew, but there was some cool stuff. There was a Kappa, there was a Stork. New? Cool. I like all these designs so far. There's very few of them I dislike. And speaking of trying to understand the game and thinking you know how it works, I was fairly certain the game, the levels for each gym, each Titan, they change depending on where you are in the game, so you could choose any path and do them any way. This time around, I said last night that we're going to go to the left side and the wild Pokemon seem way easier. And they were for a little bit. We did... I think one gym and it was super easy. It was super below us. And then once we got past that gym, everything was like level 40. So it seems like everything is scaling to the difficulty or maybe the order you're supposed to play is right, left, right, left, and go like zigzag all the time. Cause all the hard stuff is at the top and you definitely can't get there till the end. I would have a much more solid review if I knew if the game actually scales to your difficulty. There's some little hints like pneumonia, the rival, whenever you do your third gym badge, she shows up and says, oh, this is the third gym badge. You were right to pick this one, but she doesn't say which gym it is. So that leads me to believe that, oh, she shows up at any third gym. Maybe if I just watch someone else's playthrough, I would know, but I, I'm trying to avoid spoilers best I can. 
but it is hard to do a review when you only have your own experiences. I can just give you my experience. My experience is I'm having fun. I think the difficulty scales with where you are in the game, but I'm not certain of that because some stuff has been really hard and some stuff's been really easy, but it seems like everything is around our level kind of maybe we just lucked out the only other thing is this is the third team star battle and i'm a little bummed that every single one is just the car like obviously they have different types just types in general like they're basically gym leaders and they have like not grunts but secondary pokemon that kind of fill in the slots but fighting this car over and over it was fun the first two times this is the first star battle we had that was not difficult at all required no strategy really nothing we did this time around required strategy it was pretty easy of course we got done in three hours instead of five but is it really fun to play less of it because it was easy I don't think easy makes something bad. I had fun. Like I said, I don't want to talk myself out of it. I have fun every night. Just as far as ranking the nights, I still think maybe two is at the top, three is right below it, and then four, one. I think one is still the worst because you really could not do anything. I'm feeling like the video idea, the concept of what I'm going through in general just seems pointless. I could talk about the first day and the last day, but why talk about every day in between? It seems like nothing is really changing aside from I added the bug thing that stands upright onto my team because it has a terror type of fighting and it saved me in a battle against my friend I was playing with. Every member of my team saved me in some way in some epic uh, five to one lead that they managed to come back from. So all I can do is really just say uh, I beat the bug gym. Is it bugged? The pastry person. The olive puzzle was really weird. In the goal. Come on. It's right. Th oh, that guy's blocking it with his fucking small olives. Yeah, I got it over the- I used the ramp to, like, skip an area, so... I imagine you're allowed to do that, and it's oh, not- Oh, I- I- I didn't even skip an area with a ramp, I just nudged it up against the wall and pushed it over. Yeah, that's what they get for putting physics in the game. I did the dark, uh, star thing and the, the flying titan, and they were all fun. It's a vibe either way. Oh, this dude rocks. Nice to meet you and all, but how about we skip straight to our outro? Don't worry, I'll play you a sick Requiem as you crash and burn. Let's get this party started. This dude's crazy. Oh, he's got little DJ spinners on his- instead of a keyboard. I cannot oh, help yeah. but concur. Male students here must stray no further than one- Oh, this dude's- oh no, okay. So Guacoma is the one that sucks. Great, yeah. good to know. There has never been a good- I like this. I've never met a person who was in student council who was, like, good. The video may be bad, but it doesn't mean the game is bad. Uh, just play the clip with the uh, starter. Well, if you have another char cadet in that item, then I'll take that. That's true. <gasps> um, hey guys, can you look on stream real quick? You evolve it? Yeah, but look next to it. Oh, you got two of them. <laughs> Let's see what it is. I at least I have a backup. I have two, just in case. Oh, oh. It's pretty much my review of today. Every day I have less and less to say. It is day six. If I'm keeping track of the days, of course I've been counting since years ago, so I may have lost track at some point. Um, it's the day before Thanksgiving, and there's still a decent amount to do. There's two gym battles and one team star thing, and then I think there's three not post games, but three finales for all three um, paths. So it may be still a while. I thought we would be done. So, um. I don't think this is going to be a November video anymore. I think a couple streams ago, I was like, oh, this is the most glitches we've ever had. This is probably be the most glitches we're going to have. But they were all like fun, silly glitches. Yeah, the game crashed and it was kind of annoying, but it's like, oh, what a funny, silly, jovial time. But now I'm racing against the clock to see if I could actually finish this game and have this review out by a certain time. And the game crashed, not for any map reasons. I just jumped down. Uh, because I have the gliding ability now. I didn't mention the Titan we beat last time. Now, your, uh, Coridon can glide, right? And we're gonna get more into Coridon. Coridon, glid, glid, what are the past tense of glide? Went down to this little island. I battled this one guy, or started, I initiated a battle. And then, the background disappeared for a frame. My character was standing where his character is. And then the game crashed. 
it's been happening more frequently. And the annoying thing is the game normally auto saves like every 10 seconds. Every time you walk an extra step, it's like, oh, I got to save this. And it tanks the quality. But this time around, for whatever reason, I got 30 minutes into the stream, into the playing, which is a sixth of the time I have there. And then it crashed. And then... I had to do that over. That's wasted time. For anyone that has played this game, we were at the Dragon Titan and there was this giant Pokemon that may be related to the Dragon Titan in some way that spawns around there. And I was worried at every, throughout the stream, I was getting more and more worried because I would go into a town or into that water area and everything would slow down. Like my character would like kind of slow almost to a standstill. And I was, I saved every, five minutes because like I know it's gonna crash I know it's gonna happen again I got PTSD I said in the first day that oh maybe all the glitches are at the beginning and they just I don't know for whatever reason didn't check the beginning but now that we're getting towards the end of the game it seems like they didn't get that far when testing I mean the general consensus is this game is fantastic it just needed a couple more months in the oven and I agree, but by that same metric, they could probably just patch it out. I actually don't know that much about game development, so maybe it's too far gone. Maybe they can't fix it, but I feel like there's some work around, but if they don't update it at all, there's going to be a problem. My friend sent me a link of um, speedrunners have already broken it, and he said, oh, this is the path I took. I didn't know I was breaking the game. I did a little, I jumped farther than I should have. So the game is falling apart at an alarming rate. <laughs> Speaking of Coridon, in this one we beat the Dragon Titan, so we unlock the climbing ability. I mentioned when I was talking about Legends Arceus that climbing or flying, you just find an invisible wall and and fog fills the screen and it's really annoying. I'm just gonna call them HMs. The techniques your Coridon does to traverse. He gets a high jump, he gets to run faster, he gets to climb, and he gets to swim. Swim just happens on its own. Oh, gliding too. Gliding, you hit the B button, which is the same button you do to do the high jump, which is the same button you hit to do the climb. There are so many buttons on that controller. A bunch of them also don't do anything. Do like the left bumper. I don't know. Nobody's using that. Which doesn't seem like an issue, but the issue is if you are climbing as Coridon and then Coridon just kind of moves because it feels because there's like a 90% incline, it's like, oh, I can stand here. It'll stop climbing. And if you don't immediately hit B again, you're just going to start falling back down. So. Um, we got the climbing mechanic this night, and it's, uh, annoying. Don't let this exterior make it seem like I'm not having fun. I'm still having a uh, gay old time. Gay isn't fun, also, but also a gay way. Uh, but playing this game. What did I mean by that? But I keep filming these at the end of the day, and I only get so far each stream and doing, th I, I really, I don't know what this video's deal is anymore. I don't know where I'm going with the concept. I don't know what point I'm trying to make. I don't even know if this thing is going to be out or when it's going to be out. Is it Christmas? I don't know. What I do know is I lost a battle this time around. There was actually a huge difficulty spike because we went around to different things because I was very under leveled and the two people I was playing with were doing stuff in between, not grinding per se, but just going around to catch stuff. And the nature of that is you get a higher level. I have only been playing main story stuff and the whole point of the um, let's go battling, I think the passive battle, is so you don't have to grind, but I was still viciously under leveled. Every fight is like I'm fighting for my life and I lost a couple. And to me, that makes it more fun, but also at a certain point, when am I going to get back to the level I'm supposed to be? Maybe the game is just supposed to be hard, or maybe I haven't been grinding as much as I should, but that feels like it kind of defeats the purpose. I feel like there was something else I wanted to say, but I don't remember what it was. Well, uh, happy Thanksgiving. I hate Thanksgiving, man. I, I'm, can we skip that one? But this is the perfect place to catch something weak to trade you. Uh, like this, Ghastly. I'll nickname it. It's for my friend. His name will be Gar Gart. All right, I missed Y. His name is Gart. The code is 80085. They're both important. Gart is a very important character, even though we just met him. We know how he got his name, and that's all you really need to know about a character. In its simplest form, we know what he's about. He, I am inside the... Don't worry, guys. Gart is in good hands. All right, it's like um, in the Diamond and Pearl anime where they traded like Apom for Buizel, but they still like their friends still yeah. had it. Yeah, it'll be like that. I'm sure we'll see Gart again, everyone. Maybe someday. Yeah. <laughs> I was right. So I called two things. One thing I called very early, very early into the game or very early into this whole experiment. I called Wiglet. I said, oh, Wiglet's going to be anglerfish. I was very wrong about that. Turns out it's just a boring ass other thing, whatever. Penny, though, I said this whole thing was going to have a lot of spoilers, so you should have definitely played the game by this point, because this isn't 
If you are watching this to decide whether or not you think you should buy the game, whether or not you think it's a good purchase, that is not the reason you should be watching this. This is barely constitutes as a review anymore. I am simply giving my thoughts after every day, and it, it's the general ups and downs of a situation that entails that kind of setup. I said one of the nights, I said, you know what, this is Cassipia, I bet it's Penny. I was right. So tonight we got a lot done. I haven't really been mentioning the previous nights, but tonight we did the final two gym leaders. I also still don't know how the order works, if you can do your own custom order. The last two we had, and the final team star thing. And I gotta say, I haven't, we haven't done the league stuff yet. We have done everything in the game aside from the league and then post games after that. Originally, I was just gonna stream a bunch of days in a row and then just review after every day. But I think because we are bleeding so much in forward and this thing is going rapidly off the rails that I think when credits roll is when I can give my review. Because the whole point of this was I don't, I can't have my opinion a couple hours in, I have to at least beat the game. I'm gonna beat the game, but also when it comes to Pokemon games, the post game is important, and this game actually seems to have a lot of post game, and that does factor into people's reviews, but I think we all come to terms with the fact that this is not an in-depth analysis or review, it just dumb man gives thoughts immediately about fun children's game he's having fun with. What a fun time. This sounds more bitter. I do love this game. I'm having a great time. So I can't really talk about the league stuff. The two gym leaders were fun. One was a rapper uh, and one was a snowboarder. Snowboard. Just moving left and right though. Oh, mine's pure white. Was yours pure white? Uh, no. Okay. So. so then there's a texture glitch. Mine is pure. Oh, never mind. His colors are fading back in. They kind of hinted that you could be able to rap battle the person, but that it didn't let you, and I was bummed by that, even though I decided that. Let me get a metronome. <laughs> Hold on. 60 BPM. No, that's too slow. Uh, 120 BPM. Pro cashier, while well, I'm about to check out, must have got your rhymes at a deep discount. Please, you think you can step to my game? Fool, I got rhyme right there in my name. I'm a specter from which there's no protector, but the victory unto me is the render. What the? When the crowd sees the more. I, uh, you're a mere pretender. Yeah. You're the imposter. You want to end my reign? Yeah, keep dreaming. Buy a book of rhymes, kid, and start reading. I'm done, you won. My rhymes totally whiffed, but I'll be back maybe after my next shift. Ooh. Oh, damn. See, where it, the reason they chose this to be on the ice town and the ice mountain is because this is very uh, provocative of famous rapper Vanilla Ice. You got the same flow. That yeah. was over way too fast. Gets me wearing the crown if no one makes me fight. Okay, that part doesn't rhyme. I don't- Oh, do we get to- oh, Do we kind of get to rap? Back. That's pretty cool. Hey, my opener's back. You here for the rap battle or a gym battle? I'm here for a rap battle. We finished all the Titans last time, and now that we have all the different movement mechanics, we can jump off a very high point, because of course the ice mountain that the two final gyms are on are on the tallest ice mountain. Jump off and glide our way down, and it really is apparent why the game performs pretty bad is because it needs to load in so much and of course other big triple a budget games have loaded in a lot more you know gta maybe xenoblade uh dragon quest they all can do it i'm just saying from a pokemon standpoint i now kind of understand why it fucks up a lot is because if you jump off the tallest point in the game and float down it has to load basically the entire game because of that it's concerning. It looks a little choppy, but we already knew it. My review of the glitches, I feel like I say this every time and I'm like a broken record. If they're just funny visual glitches, which there are a lot of, and they might patch out, who knows? I hope they don't because a lot of them are funny. It's fine. It doesn't affect the gameplay. The ones that do affect the gameplay is when the game crashes. I hate that. That's annoying. Speed running and skipping stuff, whatever. That doesn't really impact the way I play, but the crashing is annoying. I feel like People are blaming Pokemon and it is their fault, but this also seems to just be a general Switch issue with the not exclusively Nintendo games. Like if there's any game, even if Nintendo worked on it, that's partially some other company, it crashes a lot. I played Crash 4 and ironically that crashed like every other level. It was a mess. I really don't know and still don't know what the proper order you're supposed to do this game in is. The theory I landed on was like, okay, you can do the three paths in any order, but you have to do the path, the path scale with themselves. They don't scale to the other paths. But the ending of the Titan Path and the Star Path was... Ending of Titan Path was battling, um... I forgot his name. Arvin, who has like level 50s and one level 60. And then end of Star Thing 
is battling uh, Director, whose Pokemon are a little stronger than that, and then Penny, who's a little stronger than that. So it seems like you're supposed to do them in this order, but if you only do one path, you're like, oh, I want to do the Titan path first, and you get to this guy and he's got level 60s, and then you do every other path, maybe they scale. Maybe if you do the Titan path first and only the Titan path, it'll only be, they'll be level 30 or whatever. But again, I haven't looked up anything about the game. I haven't seen anyone do any path, but the clips I have seen, it seems like everyone's doing the same general path. So while the game does claim to be open world and you can technically go anywhere, it may have roadblocks it didn't properly announce beforehand we're getting somewhere though i've heard a lot of good things about the post game all very vague all i don't know about it. unfortunately that's not going to be part of my review my big review at the end after finishing the league i'm gonna have my final results aside from the league though there are two other paths i want to talk about it real quick the titan path and the star path are really fun and we're a nice change of pace and i think it's a good in between of how sun and moon tried to do away with gym leaders by making it a little more fun and then sword and shield tried to have like gym challenges and puzzles that weren't just like walking puzzles we're actually doing tasks and um the gyms in scarlet and violet do that but i think the titan star battles are a good way of not going with traditional gym battles, but also meeting halfway and also having traditional gym battles in it. And what I'm saying is they're fun. On top of that, just those two out of the three are some of the best stories in the series we've seen in a very long time. I used to hate Arvin because I gave him an annoying voice and that was my fault and he was kind of pompous. Um, but then as the game went, I started to feel for him. I started to feel for his dog and then when I battled him, I felt bad when he beat me and felt good when I finally won, when I finally beat the Pokemon, the dog that I helped heal, which means he owes it to me, which means he should have thrown the game or given the dog to me. It is my property. And the story with Team Star and Penny, you think it's going to be like, oh, they're just naughty kids and they're dropping out of school. But by the end, the director, the guy who runs the school is like, oh, I fucked up. I'm the, I haven't been looking out for these kids. They're just standing up for themselves. You know what? Individuality is good. You guys are going to be in charge of helping the other kids. That's awesome. Those are two great stories. There's a third story. I like the characters of some of the gym leaders, but that's just a given for most Pokemon games. Even the games with the worst story have interesting kind of gym leaders, right? I mean, Sword and Shield didn't have a good story, but I still like Milo and Nessa. I think they their designs are interesting and the way they talk is funny. And Nimona, I get that people like her. I get her whole gimmick. I think it's interesting. I don't vibe with her. Maybe, again, because I gave her an annoying voice. Maybe voice acting would help. Who knows? But story-wise, aside from the League thing, the League thing isn't even that bad. But these two stories, Starfall and Titan Path, I've been great. And on this stream, we've finished the Titan Path, we finished the Starfall Path. All that is left is tomorrow, beating the league, beating the game. Of course, we're gonna go for a longer time, maybe do some post-game stuff, who knows? But regardless, whatever it ends off on next time, will be my final review. I'm going to use that information. And I know once I upload this video, I will have played the game like a week more and I'll be like, oh man, I should have mentioned this. I didn't get to this part. But the nature of this is it isn't really a review or an analysis or an editorial or a video essay. It is simply... What am I doing? I am documenting my process through this game, documenting my thought process, documenting the game process. We're experiencing it. And I like this little tradition because it's different. And we did the same thing three years ago. And guess what? We're going to do the same thing three years from now. Hopefully Pokemon moves forward because honestly, Legends of Arceus was a great step forward. And I used to think this game was one step forward, two steps back. But it's actually a lot of steps forward. I really like it. I think it's fun. But don't take it from me. Take it from tomorrow because he's going to have a lot of thoughts. I forgot. Happy Thanksgiving. That was a bit. I totally forgot that was a thing going on. Wait, right. so you so, can just get all eight badges and then fail the interview and never challenge And it's not automatically Let's failing begin. if I get it wrong. So what brings you to the Pokemon League today? Just for uh, fun, I guess. Champion, I guess. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Why oh, else would you be here, I suppose? not what mine says. He says, I, does I, it? I see. That concludes this interview. No! no! <laughs> you got failed. I failed. But I am here for fun. <laughs> You may think the couch looks completely clean right now, but that's because you can't see the bottom part. I am soaking my undies right now doing this. Day eight in a row of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. A couple of them three hours every night, a couple of them five hours. A decent amount of time into this game. Eight gym badges, five Titans, five stars, four Elite Four members, a little test beforehand, the champion, the finale the ending of the base game of Scarlet and Violet. And yet I still feel like there's so much more to do. But you can like breed them, so I imagine the legendaries are also shiny locked.
Oh, Denim Cowboy, hello. You made it. I will say this, going forward, there's still a lot more I want to do in the game, and a lot more I am going to do in the game. Which is good! Which is exciting. I said previously that each new generation becomes the hub game that I do, like shiny hunts, or just battling, or leveling up, or grinding. And a big point of contention for a lot of Pokemon games, for a lot of folks, is the post-game. What you can do after the game. And I expected something more along the lines of Sword and Shield, when not a lot of post-game, maybe just do some fun stuff. But it seems like there still is a lot to do in this game. If I picked up the correct information from doing the end stuff, by the way, by the end, I don't mean I beat the league, I mean I did all the Area Zero stuff I could, and then got to the credits. The credits rolled, I listened to Ed Sheeran, I mean, I turned the music part off, but I got to the credits. That is the end of the game. Oh. Well, hello there. C can you come inside, please? Nah. Fuck. Oh, right. No! <gasps> Did I get it? This is my second attempt reviewing a new generation as it happens, and yet I still feel like I don't have a good enough grasp or opinion of what I'm talking about, which is strange because I'm this far into with this video. Sword and Shield I only talked about for a couple hours. This game, I could finally have my full opinion by the end of the game. And I do have some thoughts, but... They're a little scattered. Everyone always says, oh, just speak off the cuff. Say what you want. This is what happens when I don't make a script. None of it makes sense and I repeat myself. I noticed a couple things after the game saying that you have to battle all the gym leaders again. I didn't do the gimmickle stuff. There's a bunch of other past Pokemon I didn't catch. I caught all the future ones because I was playing with Violet players. And, um... What was the fourth thing? There was a fourth thing. Oh, and there's stakes in the ground. So a lot still to do in the game, and yet I have to give my final opinion now, even though I'm going to continue to play it, because this video has to come out. Because otherwise, if we're going to sit on this footage, and it's going to be outdated. It's not going to make sense. Is it even Thanksgiving anymore? Who knows? I could go in detail about all the stuff we did today, and all the important things that happened. And I had a lot of fun in Area Zero, which is technically... I would call it a post-game area, but it happens before the credits, but after the league? Where is it? Don't know. Sometimes you get thrown back out. Yeah. Oh, that's your profile or your card picture, yeah. Yeah, and but then there's a profile picture, which is different. Profile picture is hard. Battled zero. Tr okay, trainer icon. That's right. That one's harder. Get a good picture. Get a good picture. Right. It's dead ass that circle. That's the only shot you can get. You be that guy. <laughs> You're really far away. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> that's the one. I'm the far away man. I think it's interesting that there's this many new Pokemon in new forms, and I really like. Most of them. I like the past ones. The future ones are just all iron and steel. I don't love it. Some designs are better than others. And I was gonna say, originally, I had three different thoughts. Oh man, all this cool stuff is exclusive to the post-game. That's annoying. Second thought, oh, it's cool that they they padded out the post-game with all this new stuff. Third thing, there's way more to the post-game, and I don't even think the Area Zero is the post-game. The end of the game is fighting the robot Sada, and that story is sad. Like I said previously, I fuck with Penny and Arvin stories. I think this is one of the best story-based Pokemon games in a very long time, where I'm actually invested in the characters, even though I gave them all annoying voices that strain my throat, and after I film this bit, I'm not gonna be able to talk anymore because I've been doing the voices the whole time. Maybe the game should have voice acting. Let's talk about this. My point, uh, past tense, not remembering what it was like when I was playing Legends Arceus. Oh, uh, we don't need voice acting. I like reading the voices. I forgot um, how much voice acting and doing different voices for three hours or five hours. We played for six today. We'll strain your voice so that you won't be able to talk. Um, I've changed my mind. I think the game also deserves voice acting. I'm with everyone else now. Because there are scenes in the game where it's not even dialogue options. It's just pe an actual cutscene, and the mouths of the characters are moving, and yet there's a text box, but the text box moves at its own speed. So even if you're trying to read them, it may go by faster. Maybe you're a slow reader. Maybe you're trying to do a voice and you're stumbling over yourself because you're trying to fucking not die. So that's a point. It seems like every new Pokemon game, there's never a great one, right? A lot of them are very, very good. I think this game is actually pretty, really good. Actually, great. Okay, sorry. I started with great and then had to work my way down. Great is not good enough perfect Pokemon game. The last couple Pokemon games, and by that I mean Legends Arceus, Scarlet Violet, have been great, but they haven't been this perfect Pokemon game. And it seems like for years, this entire Switch generation, every time a new Pokemon game comes out, like, oh man, this is such a good foundation. This will be a good game, eventually. This will turn into the perfect Pokemon game at some point. 
if they keep doing this. And I was going to say that with Scarlet and Violet because it's true. I think it's a good foundation for a lot of interesting stuff going forward. I saw clips of it running in 60 FPS on different hardware, and it doesn't crash as much, and it's not as laggy. Yeah, maybe the Switch is holding it back, but also there are other Nintendo games that look fantastic on this. Maybe it's just poorly optimized. Maybe it needed a couple more months in the oven. Maybe they could set out a patch to make it better. Could they do that? I don't know. I love the textures in the game. I love the Pokemon look. They feel like I can touch them, you know? They all have sleeping animations in the picnic, except when you put them to sleep in battle, they don't sleep. You have the animations, just use that. What point was I getting to? I feel like I side tangented myself. Oh yeah, my original thought, the first thing that popped in my head was, oh, this is a good foundation for a Pokemon game. I can't wait till we get that perfect one. But honestly, I feel like I've been saying that for years and we're not there yet. I still do believe we're getting there, but it's kind of like the hypothetical of you're walking towards a wall and you're always going halfway so you're eight feet away halfway okay four feet four feet away okay two feet you will never reach that wall you will get closer every time but you will never reach that wall i believe optimistically that pokemon can reach that wall but i am tired of saying oh we're almost there that being said, I love this game. I think it's great. Ah, I tricked you. There were some issues. The only issue I ever had was when the game crashed. When the game glitches out, whatever. All right, I talked about Fallout 4. I talked about GTA 5. I play wrestling games for fun. Glitches do not bother me. As long as they're not in the way of gameplay. Visual glitches, we've had some funny little things, okay? Maybe we've lagged out a couple times, but it wasn't because of any actual game stuff. It just kind of happened. The game crashing... That's the one thing I do think for sure should be patched out. And I left on autosave and I was still annoyed. My one friend who was playing didn't have autosave on and just saved whenever he wanted to. And he crashed after beating the league and he had to do it again. This is the first Pokemon game I've had that crashed. Uh, Sun and Moon also did that or it's soft locked for me. But it's the one that's happened the most frequently in such a condensed amount of time. I don't think you need to fix the visual glitches. I don't think you need to patch anything to make the game look better. I just wish it wouldn't crash. That's it, really. That's my opinion. I think the game's great. I love the exploration aspects. I love the new Let's Go mechanic. I love most the new Pokemon. Uh, even the ones I didn't like as much have grown on me. I like my team. Check them all out there. They all beat the league together. It's a pretty poorly optimized team, but they're mine and I love them. And they're my friends and they love me. I love the picnic aspects. I love the sandwich aspects. And I'm sure there's so much more of this game I will love when I get more in depth and find research, you know, and go into actually talking to people online. And again, three years down the line, whenever I'm talking about the next generation, I'm gonna be like, oh, I gotta talk about Scarlet Violet again because that guy three years ago didn't actually know what the fuck he was talking about. And also the game didn't get better. There is a Charizard raid going on December 1st. And originally I was like, oh yeah, Charizard's cool. But then I remembered Charizard isn't in Scarlet and Violet. So they could just slowly add more and more Pokemon through updates. That'd be great. I think that's the perfect in-between of doing the Mario sports game, slowly updating it and leaving everyone included, being able to transfer shit in. I think it's great. It's a shame you can't transfer all the Pokemon into every Switch game yet, but we still could get there. I really do think if they, when Sword and Shield, the first Dexit thing first happened, if they just said, hey, they'll all be added, ba added back eventually, I'm stumbling over myself. This is a great game. I had fun. I like most of the characters. I like the story. I don't like giving one out of, or like 10 out of 10 or whatever numbers, but I will say I liked it more than Sword and Shield. I liked it more than X and Y. Liked it more than... Ooh, there's a toughie. I liked it more than BDSP. I'll say it. I like. I don't know if I liked it more than Sun and Moon, but I think it's a better game than Sun and Moon. I think it is really a perfect direction for Pokemon to go in. There are some things from Legends Arceus I wish were more prevalent. This being said, Legends Arceus performed worse, I guess, graphically, but it had new designs, kind of, that looked really good, and the game never crashed. It never glitched for me. There was annoying climbing mechanics, but that game has no multiplayer whatsoever. Even Why did I say it like that? Ever? Even less than normal Pokemon games do, and Scarlet and Violet are very online. The most online Pokemon games I've ever played. You can play the game with your friends. Ooh, damn. <laughs> Wait, line them up. Kane, come, <laughs> Kane, come here. Oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like someone who didn't play with their friends is going to have a completely different review. I loved it because I got to play every night with my friends who I played Pokemon with since I was a kid, and that's important. I've always wanted to play with my friends, and that's what I want. What I wanted from Sword and Shield is what I got in Scarlet and Violet. It's just what I got in Legends Arceus is what I thought I wanted in this game, but it turns out Legends Arceus just did some things better. But Scarlet and Violet also did some things better. My review of this game that is currently out and we can all play is that, ooh, I hope the next game is the combination of these two. Maybe I just like Pokemon. Maybe I could just be excited about the future without being a negative, all right? I am arguing with myself because 
half of the people are like, this game is fantastic. Who cares about the glitches? The other half of the people are like, this is ruining the games industry. And you know what? I th originally, I thought this video, if we are finally getting to a point, I thought the point of this video was for me to finally review a generation and have my full review. But if you go back to the beginning, the first thing I said in this review is some people think it's fantastic. Some people think it's terrible. They're both wrong. It's fine. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is a good game. It's not an affront to nature. It's not the best thing that's ever happened. It's a good game. It's a good Pokemon game. It's fun. I like playing with my friends. I like the game. I like Pokemon. Fuck you. That's a great way to end this review. What are you still doing here? I truthfully have nothing left to say. If that were true, I would have ended this already. I'm still waiting to see if anything pops in my brain. They killed Arvin's mom. No, what is this? He needs that. He needs that Gengar. Oh, do you want the Gengar? There's an in-game trade for it. No, there's, there's a reason I'm sending this guy back. Oh, fuck. No, I forgot. <laughs> he has both. <laughs> Was this? I forgot what I named him. <laughs> He's returned. And in, and in greater numbers. Yeah. Oh, Gart. I forgot about Gart. Oh yeah, we made a big deal about Gart. Well now Gart gets to become... It's real. Yeah. Gengart. He's to reach his final form on stream. Right. Well, the chat was pretty mad I traded away Gart. Oh, he's back now. Yeah. He's got grass in his mouth. 
All right, well. A good story to end the stream. Yeah, now I got a little present for you. Ah!